you tell me just to go back a little bit to uh, for both of you kind of talking about your mm, how your educational growth happened over the last few years moving from more of a junior to a mid-level developer what was that experience like um even what would be your like definition of those two roles hmm. i think everyone has different definitions of junior mid and senior um, and I've tried to not let other people's definitions define me or affect me because for me, when I reach those different levels, it's going to be a feeling. Um, I, I knew when I was reaching mid-level when I became more confident and independent and I was able to focus more on the big picture of projects and how certain features or bug fixes affected things overall and in the long term. And, you know, I went from just being an implementer to designing and architecting, you know, how I was going to move forward and doing that on my own, presenting it to the team and moving along. And so I think independence um, is a big thing you learn. Um, and also being able to support and mentor less experienced devs, I think, is a great opportunity because it strengthens your skills a lot. Um, so. I think a lot of people just focus on like the years of experience, but it's really different for everybody. Everybody grows at different paces. And so I think it's a very individual decision. Yeah, personally. that's an interesting thing. I do think that a lot of times it is companies or hiring managers maybe that like need those years to mean something, mm -hmm. right? The two years or three years or 10 years or whatever it is like means that you know certain things, but I think that y you're right, that it is such an individualized thing. And then it's really on the company to kind of help you to understand what that means within that organization. Absolutely. Did you have um, the balance of, at either organization of like junior, mid, senior developers on your team? Was that like a helpful, mm, uh, tool to use? Absolutely. I, I, I've, I know companies have a hard time hiring juniors. Nobody wants to take that time to invest in them, yeah, but it's, true. it's, it's, it's so worth it. I mean, I, I mean, I think because I had a career for so long too, I, I didn't have to learn a lot of the um, newer skills as like someone just coming out of college. Um, and I did need some support, but I was also able to be independent. Um, and not take up too much of their time, but the seniors and the mids that helped me grow, I mean, it, it definitely paid off for them because I was able to contribute to them in other ways based on my past and quickly get up to speed and take work off their plate. Um, so, I mean, that's the ideal situation. And, you know, and I, I stayed there for a few years at my first position and, you know, gave back. So it's not like I grew and was gone, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, we had the la the two companies I've worked as a developer at. It was a great balance. That's great. Yeah. Emma, ta tell me a little bit about your that educational journey for you. I know you especially went through a, a slightly more structured uh, apprenticeship program. Yeah. That like helped you through becoming that junior and then growth beyond that? Yeah, yeah. My first couple of months were pretty structured where I was doing a lot of like on the job learning and a lot of like direct sh um, shadowing and pairing in with like the more senior developers. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the company I worked for was also a consultancy. Um, so we were in kind of a unique position in that like our job um, was to like amplify a team um, and either build a product for them or assist their own developers in um, in building something and also train uh, and support their developers to be able to continue to maintain and develop this project like when we were no longer on the team. Um, so with that kind of being the context in the industry in which I was like learning and growing, it was challenging at times for me because I was the most junior person in the room by decades compared to some people. Um, and uh, I just like, I always felt like there was like such a huge knowledge gap. Um, but as I like, you know, after I completed my apprenticeship and was like working, you know, just as a junior member on the team, um, you know, kind of like what Jenny was saying, like I was, uh, 
I was like building. I was an implementer for a while, but mm-hmm. as I grew in experience, I was able to um, make more suggestions or be able to like catch things that maybe somebody else missed. Um, there was a period of time um, where I was actually the only uh, the only consultant on a on a team, um, and so it was like mostly there was a short period of time where it was like me and like the client, and that was about it. You know, uh, I would meet with the client and work on some stuff, and um, when we had availability from another engineer, we'd pull them in. Like they'd help me work on stuff, but um, I was really anchoring that team, and that made me grow a lot. Um, And I was on that project for a long time. Um, The client ended up hiring a couple of other developers. um, And so I got to kind of like be a part of that team as it grew and as the priorities changed. Um, But it was a great experience for me to kind of be the voice of my team um, for that client and be like, here's what I would do. Like, here's some advice, here's some gotchas. here's the work I've done so far. Um, it was a really great experience for me. And I continued after moving off of that project, I think I continued to play a larger role in other projects that I was on um, afterwards. And that kind of signal, signaled the shift for me, I think, uh, into a more mid-level 